Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, my co-host, the Chief Research Officer for Wikibon's Big Data Practice. Uh, we are here with Peter Zeitz, the co-founder and CEO of Percona. This is his show, Percona Live. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So you guys have over a thousand people attending. Um, it's not a sexy show relative to Microsoft's big build in San Francisco with their interest in the iPhone, not iPhone, the Windows, <laughs> the iPhone clone wannabe, um, and other events, but it's a lot of, a very important event because developer action right now is all about the data. Uh, we saw the NoSQL databases obviously come onto the scene very rapidly with the advent of big data and fast data, mobile computing, but MySQL's not going away. I mean, it's, 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 if anything, it's escalated in importance at the scale level, at many levels, and you're seeing analytics being powered by some structured database. You got to roll that data up into some schema. Maybe some schema less designs come down the road for handling the new data types. No problem. But SQL's not going away. My SQL in particular. So, so with that in mind, what is the focus of this show? Why is this important? Share with the folks why Percona Live is such an important show. Well, I believe that Percona Live is uh, is important because this is this uh, sort of big tent. We uh, really keep it open, we invite uh, all kind of uh, players here, wherever they are our partners or our competitors, wherever their opinion matches our or uh, different from us. And I think because we keep it real, that is very much appreciated by, by, by uh, our attendees, our speakers and uh, our sponsors. What is the, um, just share some the numbers of some people here. What are some of the vendors here? And give some examples of the kind of people that are showing up here. Yeah, so if you uh, think about the MySQL, uh, uh, those days there are three major MySQL var variants. There is obviously uh, like the true MySQL by uh, Oracle, uh, and we have uh, uh, tons of uh, folks from uh, Oracle development team uh, participating here, giving talks. Uh, including Thomas Ullin, who runs the engineering uh, at Oracle. We also have their uh, MariaDB team uh, here uh, with uh, a lot of folks, which is the second variant. And they actually have chosen the, this show to time the, uh, do the uh, GA release for their new major MariaDB 10, which we are very proud of. And uh, of course, uh, there is uh, Percona with, uh, with our products, which are also well presented here. What are some of the challenges people have and what's the opportunities with scale? When you look at MySQL, you've seen all the great great ones that have taken open source MySQL and built companies around it because you know, they didn't have the big bucks like Facebook when they started. Obviously Google and Amazon and LinkedIn, Twitter, they're all open source guys. Those guys are a, kind of a black swan, unicorn, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. them. They're just unique. They're like, they're eating glass, they're spitting out nails. They're hardcore mm -hmm. dudes. Now. The normal market, LAMP stack developers, building software, doing stuff in the enterprise, they use, they've used Mongo in the past, it's worked well, but everyone's hitting this glass ceiling. So I got to ask you the question, what is the main thought leadership today around breaking that glass on performance and taking scale to the next level? Yes. Well, uh, I would say for MySQL, I like to uh, see what there are two kinds of applications, uh, and I will call them simply large and small, right? If the large applications, these are like uh, Facebook, or even at uh, a little bit uh, uh, smaller scale, and those- Facebook's a large application. Yeah. Let's check the box on that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and those uh, things have to have a very advanced technology for scaling. They need to scale to large amount of service implementing technologies like sharding, caching, they use a lot of very, uh, very advanced stuff. I think uh, it already has been proven that the MySQL can be used to build application of a really extreme scale. And for those guys, the challenge right now comes, uh, I believe, in twofold. First one is efficiency, because in a Facebook scale, 
when you're running uh, tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of uh, servers of MySQL, every 10% is millions of dollars uh, worth of cost savings. So uh, you really try to squeeze as much from uh, existing hardware as possible. The second is uh, uh, efficiency in terms of, uh, of automation. Right? You can uh, always find what uh, even those uh, very famous companies have a hard time uh, recruiting the qualified DBAs and their operational team usually cannot grow as quickly as the uh, amount of their applications and database instances they're running. So there is a lot of heavy investment how we can automate things, how we can do more, manage our databases better with, uh, uh, with the smaller stuff. This is all what comes to the larger applications, right? And then another trend that I believe is the MySQL with application I would uh, call small. Now, small doesn't necessarily mean like small as their, uh, your home DVD collection, right? It may be actually a quite significant scale of application, but you, which you can still run from their uh, relatively simple architecture with single MySQL server or maybe uh, very simple uh, replication setup. And because of the recent hardware advance, you can run phenomenal amount uh, of uh, traffic from those kind of applications. We have a, a companies which generates many uh, tens of millions of revenue uh, from essentially this kind of setup or supporting uh, internal website for company with 200,000 employees, stuff like that. Uh, this, I think, uh, is a very mm, interesting trend. Let me ask you a question. Tell um, how do I phrase it? Okay, so here's here's how I will phrase this one. What are the biggest things for the folks out there? Share the, to the with the audience out there. What is the biggest thing that they may not know about what's going on in the MySQL world that hasn't hit the mainstream yet that you guys know in in, in the thought leader geek circles here uh, under the hood? What's happening and what's next? What's the most important thing that, that's going to come out of this, this sea change? We heard from Fusion IO around non-volatile memory compression. You mentioned sharding, mm -hmm. which is you know, a technique in, in, in mm -hmm. managing data. But, no, but some things are happening. But what, what is it that people don't know today that they should know about what's happening? Yes, well, uh, I think it's uh, the most exciting thing in my school right now is what there is uh, a lot of uh, very rapid innovation happening, and in a lot of cases, this is driven by uh, by competition, right? I think the MySQL right now, even MySQL uh, at Oracle, is moving much faster than ever before, uh, uh, partly because of the uh, resources Oracle have available, and partly because of the uh, competition from uh, folks like uh, MariaDB and uh, and Percona server. And I think that competition really benefits MySQL users. Another uh, interesting announcement, which a uh, few folks may have heard about, is uh, there uh, something called a uh, WebScale SQL, which is an uh, engineered cooperation between uh, Google, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, which may uh, be somewhat competing, right? But they have chosen to work together on uh, getting the next generation of MySQL variant for an extreme scale. And I'm very excited about uh, how much uh, uh, great stuff could come out of that. So d talk about that a little bit more. Um, you know, it sounds like, I mean, clearly MySQL is still an extremely important part of their infrastructure and they're mm -hmm. the way they uh, support their applications. Um, do you think kind of the work they're doing together is going to uh, have an impact on more traditional enterprises or is this pretty much uh, going to stay with the large scale companies or, or do you see us moving to, some, to a point where eventually, as we've seen with other technologies like Hadoop, some of the things developed at these at the large web scale companies make their way into the enterprise? Or are we a long way from that? Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> when they're speaking about the MySQL, and, and web scale SQL is a product focused particularly on their uh, MySQL-like environment, right? So uh, I believe there is uh, going to be a fair amount of changes integrated in the, uh, in the, uh, in the mainstream uh, MySQL, uh, in the Oracle branch. In fact, uh, they have been already uh, taken some of the patches from uh, Facebook or uh, Twitter and uh, Google and integrating that uh, in the main line. And I think also some of the changes may be very specific to how Google uses MySQL or Facebook mm -hmm. uses MySQL, right? Which will uh, uh, remain in their respective branches. And I think that's uh, uh, that's fine. <clears throat> now, you mentioned their 
Hadoop, Mongo, and uh, other technologies. I think it's very important to understand that even though uh, uh, some of those companies they want to position like they are replacing MySQL, I believe in uh, majority of cases uh, they are run along alongside with mm. MySQL. Right? Uh, take a look at uh, uh, Facebook, for example. They run a bit of everything. There is a lot of MySQL there, but you can find there Cassandra. Mm -hmm. uh, Mongo, Memcache, Redis, a lot of uh, other technologies. And I think that is what really makes the open source data management technologies so exciting because in, uh, when you have a single vendor approach, right, you say, hey, I'm with Oracle, right, and they want me to do everything with Oracle. Your application server is Oracle, Qune is Oracle, Cashin is Oracle. That is not so an open source environment. MySQL is great for a certain uh, uh, set of things, but not for everything. And we have to all recognize that, and there is room to use uh, Hadoop and uh, MongoDB, Redis, Memcache for other things. And we are finding ways how uh, right now how to operate those technologies mm -hmm. together effectively. And I think that is a, one of the great trends happening right now. What do you think about what's going on in the uh, cloud mobile world relative to data? Obviously, it's higher up the stack, and a mm -hmm. lot of the database has always been the enabler for that. So mm -hmm. database, database, it's a cool time to be a database guy right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I have to say, you know, one of my degrees in computer science is in database design, the other one's in operating systems, and I mean, hell, I never told anyone I was a database guy. It's like, you know, <laughs> hey, what do you, ah, don't worry, business, you know? I mean, but it wasn't a sexy degree back in the 80s, right, and 90s. Yes. So, but now, <laughs> it's all the rage because of all the enablement. How is databases changing today is it the intersection with NoSQL? Is it the connectors? Is it is it the coexistence? Is it the open source? All of the above? What's your take on that? Oh, uh, I think there's a lot of trends uh, uh, trends out there, right? Uh, like, I was starting with the last one, the open source, right? I think when it comes to computing, the open source really has uh, proven itself, right? We have the uh, open source operating system for a while, MySQL, open source database, a lot of innovation uh, where being that Hadoop or right, uh, Mongo or MongoDB Cassandra. These are all open source uh, uh, technologies, right? Which is very important. Cloud is is another important factor uh, from a uh, different perspective. I think uh, cloud really changed how a lot of innovation happens. A lot of uh, startups can start with their application much uh, faster and less expensive than uh, than ever before. Uh, and be a lot more agile as well. Cloud also allows us to uh, really have a dynamic scaling, right? So you can go from one server to 100 in, in a matter of minutes if you have to, uh, and that allows us to build a newer, much more effective application, especially for uh, uh, some uh, applications which are seasonal or otherwise have a spikes of, uh, of activity. Now, you mentioned the mobile, and I think that is another interesting trend which uh, drives a lot of challenge uh, in the databases. We are generating uh, much more data those days. This data can be uh, not structural, and a lot of that data is, uh, is also uh, location specific. If you think about that, this uh, ability to support your uh, location when it comes uh, to the data was uh, one of the great um, uh, the focus of a lot of modern technologies, like MongoDB, for example, uh, does that uh, does it pretty well. And I'm also excited about, uh, to see what MySQL is catching up. One of the announcements uh, Oracle has done yesterday was uh, MySQL 5.7 release with uh, sp special high performance support for uh, for uh, for location searches, which is looks like a minor thing, but it's very important enabling factor for mobile technologies and and vice versa. So uh, another uh, kind of important topic, I think, when you're talking about open source technology, shifting gears a little bit, tell, talk us a little bit about Percona's business model. So mm -hmm. when you're in the open source world and you're providing services and some level of uh, some software, mm -hmm. there's always the question of, okay, what do we open source? How, what do we charge for? How do you make those kind of determinations? What's Percona's approach? Uh, yes. and, and, and is that a, it sounds like that's a, it's a really critical question when you're trying to uh, play yes. in the open source community. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, when you look at the Percona, our uh, approach has been uh, a full throttle uh, open source, right? If, uh, if you take a look at that. Uh, our technologies like uh, Percona Server, Percona XRGB Cluster, Percona Toolkit, uh, Percona XR Backup, these are all uh, open source. And in many cases, we have investment into 
development technology which are alternative to the closed source technologies which Oracle provides. Mm -hmm. For example, there is a rather expensive MySQL enterprise backup, uh, but there is also Percona Extra Backup, which is uh, the alternative from Percona, which is completely open source. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you will see a lot of features in the MySQL Enterprise, such as support for very high level of connections called enterprise scalability or uh, integration with their uh, Active Directory and other authentication system, which is a uh, commercial only extension Oracle, but it exists as an open source solution in Percona server. And I think that is a very important for us to really uh, push the open source uh, forward as much uh, as we can. Now, at the same time, uh, we are not the open source uh, zealots, uh, and then there are uh, solutions exist which are proprietary, which we can bring into our customers, we use them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, our uh, support customers have access to their uh, Monio platform, which we uh, extended uh, uh, with uh, additional, uh, what we call, Percona advisors to really uh, empower the DBA in their, a lot of the companies. For our Percona XDB cluster support, we have uh, have uh, provided with our support scripts and the best of breed software called uh, Cluster Control done by several nines. And uh, well, I think that is a great thing and there is a place both for open source and uh, proprietary software. I want to get your final thoughts here as we wind down um, the segment on just give us an update on the company. You guys uh, have a lot of customers. Just give us a quick stats. Give us the, the how many customers, how many employees, how's the funding? You guys feel good about yourself? Did Intel invest $700 million this week in you guys? <laughs> um, give us some data, come on, share with us. Yes, uh, sure. Yes, Intel invested $700 uh, million in you? No, no, no. <laughs> we wouldn't take that. <laughs> Too low of a valuation. Yes, so, uh, so we've been around for uh, about seven and, a half, seven and a half years. So it will, the company was started by uh, myself and uh, Vadim Kachenka. We privileged to work in the engineering team in, uh, in, in my school, so we're pretty uh, hardcore down in the woods when we need to be. Uh, the company is about 120, 20 people right now, and we are uh, what is called the, the distributed company. And truly so, we have people in more than 20 countries uh, do you have a GitHub, around the world. Do you have a GitHub handle? Uh, yeah, there is a Kirkona. Okay. Uh, you, know, you personally? Oh, me? Well, I have a login, but I don't... Uh, share, oh, you don't share public code, okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, so... So we can't look at your code? Well, I will have to <laughs> tell it. I don't <laughs> code too much, right? I, I, I found out, you know, coding is way too slow, right? I rather like to come up with wonderful ideas and then... Uh, have someone else code them. Have someone else code them, right? <laughs> That's my, uh, my opinion. All right, so you have a couple thousand customers, seven years, uh, funding. Did you guys self-fund it yourselves? No, yes, it is uh, self-funded bootstrapped, so there is no outside investors or Zero any outside... Today. Zero, Zero today. Okay. Yes. Congratulations. Zero. Thank you. Well, it's just like Silicon Angle Network. <laughs> we have no outside investors. We can make, no one can fire us except the customers. Yes, indeed. That's <laughs> what I like. <laughs> well, we let, you're one of us. Okay. Any other stats you want to share? Employees yes, distributed. So 120. Oh, uh, the 120 employees. So 22. Uh, the countries or so. So that's uh, uh, that's it. We have. Uh, the three major business areas we provide, it's uh, MySQL uh, support, consulting, and uh, also remote-based services. All right, so the, hard, the hardest question I'm going to ask you is, where do you guys decide to have your big meetings? Which country? U.S., somewhere else? Oh, well, do you guys have everyone all around the country? Do you guys have that debate internally? Yeah, well, uh, we've been running a pretty large company meetings until uh, the, until recently when it becomes too, far, too hard to pull off and to challenging for, for our customers and uh, we try to mix fun and pleasure so then you can go to uh, we had meetings in places like Mexico uh, as well as in uh, in Turkey and Egypt because before all of those events right of course yeah of course yeah <laughs> off-site planning events yeah we've had those too yeah. not in Egypt though Jeff we got to get on that well, we might want to wait till a little. Turkey's got things some good, settle down a little bit. Good in beaches that in part Turkey. of the world. I don't know. Well, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it, Peter uh, Lights. Welcome, welcome to the Cube. Great event. Great to be here. Our first time here at your Thank event. You. Uh, we love what you're doing. Obviously, a big proponent of open source. My SQL, growing up again, going to scale. Web scale, SQL. Obviously, a big 
big uh, flashpoint for the industry with all the big guys who use data coming together to saying, hey, we can share information, take to a whole other level for performance. Um, thanks for putting on the event. Thanks for having us. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. We're here live in Silicon Valley, in the heart of Silicon Valley, in Santa Clara Convention Center for Percona Live. We'll be right back.